This talk is about uh, emotional artificial intelligence. It's a relatively new field in research in artificial intelligence, but it has a great potential to do immense good to people, for people. However, the technology can be misused. And in this talk, I want to make a point that actually it is up to us, the consumers of this technology, who will decide whether the technology will be used for good or for evil. But let me first explain what emotional artificial intelligence is really about. So, emotional artificial intelligence goes by various names. Affective computing is one of those. Another one is human-centric artificial intelligence. But actually, behind all of those names is exactly the same research topic. Automatic sensing and analysis of human behavior, and in particular, human facial behavior. Human face is really fascinating. We use the face to recognize other members of our species, to recognize other people. We use the face also to judge various things, such as age, gender, beauty, and sometimes even personality. Don't do the last one. Most importantly, the human face is the only observable window of our inner selves, of our emotions, intentions, attitudes and moods. It is therefore not surprising that in the recent years we had a surge of interest in this technology, and if we could, I mean, the reason is that if we could detect the faces in various naturalistic scenes, and then analyze the facial expressions on those faces in terms of specific emotions or specific attitudes, we could use this kind of technology for a very wide uh, number of applications. The state of the art in the field is relatively advanced, so we do have and we did develop a number of techniques that could detect and track the faces in various naturalistic scenes. We also do have the tools that can detect, track, and measure the intensity of various facial gestures, such as frowns and smiles. We also can automatically analyze higher-level behaviors, such as certain emotions and certain attitudes, like interest. However, the methodology and the technology is not fully matured. So we still have great problems in dealing with occluded faces, with dealing with faces which, where we observe large changes in head position, especially fast changes in head position. Very small faces make problem to us, and also atypical facial expressions, such as the expressions of the lady enjoying her skydive. However, the technology is matured enough to be used in a large number of really great applications. So let me just give a couple of examples of those. The first example I want to talk about is use of emotional artificial intelligence in therapies with autistic children. The human face displays 10,000 different facial expressions, 7,000 of which we display on a daily basis. Typically, developing people classify those expressions in maybe 15 or 20 categories. However, autistic children miss this generalization ability. So, 7,000 facial expressions that we express on a daily basis, they see as 7,000 different categories. This is the reason why autistic children usually do not look at our faces. They're too confusing for them. But this is also the reason why they can not understand what are our facial expressions when we try to express that we are sad or we are upset or we are happy. This is also the reason why they cannot learn what are those expressions that they should display when they want to say that they are happy or they are upset, so that typically developing people can understand them. And hence, the breakage in communication. So one of the major goals of behavioral therapy with autistic children is to give them the tools, the skills, to actually express the emotions in a way that typically developing people can understand, and also to understand what are the emotions of others around them. And 
One of the problems with this is that when you have a human teach a child these typical expressions, humans like and usually emphasize things. So when they teach the child, you know, when you are happy, you smile, they usually raise the eyebrows. And most of you probably didn't notice that at all, right? But actually, for an autistic child, a smile with a raised eyebrows is a very different expression than just a smile. So this is where we came to the idea to use the robots instead of human therapists, because you can program the robot. And the expression that the robot will show will always be the same expression, right? So when the therapist says, you know, can you display a happy facial expression, or how would you feel if you get a train, then the robot complies and shows this smiley expression. The child sees this expression, repeats the expression, and then the robot, because it recognizes that the child displayed the correct facial expression, gives a positive feedback. So this is the way you can use the robots in this uh, iterative loop of behavioral therapy with autistic children. Autistic children love robots. They actually love all mechanical toys which are built of parts. And exactly this love is something that uh, can have a really amazing effect on children. So the autistic uh, boy that uh, you have previously seen suffers from a rather severe attention deficit. However, after this session with the robot, his daily supervisor, who is this guy in the background, said to us that he has never seen the boy more attentive in a whole year. Right? Similarly, when we brought the robot to Serbia to have a session with Serbian autistic children, we had this boy who is a non-verbal child interacting with the, with the robot. When we say a non-verbal autistic child, this doesn't mean that the child cannot speak. It means that the child chooses not to speak. But after this session, you see, he was really like, happy and he was really enjoying his time with the robot. And after this session, he went home and said to his mom, and tomorrow in school, the robot, he said to his mom. So the mother, of course, immediately wrote to us and said, what did you do? <laughs> like, this is amazing. It was, it was for her an unbelievable awakening. And this kind of awakening is actually what makes the robot worthy of putting into the therapies with autistic children. And this is what makes our research on this topic fully worthwhile. Another case and, and a very good application of emotional artificial intelligence technology is the case of automatic sensing and flagging behavioral cues of depression. Depression is a huge problem currently in the Western world. We are having an increase of depressed people at all age levels. However, with teenagers, this is the worst. In USA and UK, we currently have 25% of teenage girls suffering from this illness. Overall, 17% of young ag adults aged 18 to 22 suffer from depression. It is very similar uh, the case with the elderly population. In UK, we have 22% of people above 65 years of age who suffer from depression. The worst part is that actually only one out of ten of these elderly people are officially helped by UK National Health Services. So it would be really fantastic if we would have tools that could actually detect these um, signs, behavioral cues of depression and flag them to GP or to the family members. When you talk to people about depression, they often may say to you, you know, depressed people do not smile that often. But it is not at all the case. It is not the frequency. It is really the quality of the smiles. Depressed people feel usually embarrassed if they smile. So their smiles are short-lived, and they are often dampened. Another problem is the negative bias. So whatever you say to a depressed person, they will actually interpret it more negatively than the intention was. 
Let me ask you something. What do you think this lady is currently watching? A very typical answer is that she's watching some kind of horror movie, but actually we ask her to watch funny videos. She's watching the videos of kids and cats running around. But she, due to her negative bias, she has these very strong expressions of fear and even disgust. Her smiles are really so subtle that the intensity of them are barely detectable. And it is exactly this, the cumulative effect of all those behavioral signals that we plot on this red-lined plot at the bottom of the video. So, emotional artificial intelligence can be used for great purposes, really to help people, to help humanity, but it can also be misused. Let me give you an example. In December 2017, Facebook patented a camera. The camera will be placed in shops and shopping malls. It will recognize people by their profiles in Facebook. Currently, Facebook has 1.4 billion profiles. Also, the camera will know what are the search patterns that the people exhibited on Facebook and on Google. So, they will know what we like or what we are interested in. Furthermore, the camera will watch our behavioral signals in the shop. What do we like? To which departments do we go most often? And based on all of this, the price will be customized. So the more you search for something, the more you like something, the price will be higher. The worst part is actually that neither medicines, nor medical care, nor medical services are excluded from the patent. So if somebody is ill and searches a remedy online and has a Facebook account, that person will unfortunately pay much higher prices for this medical remedy. Although, again, emotional artificial intelligence can be used for really great purposes and great good. It can be badly misused, but it is especially the case if we carelessly and blindly give our data, our behavioral data, to certain companies. So, this is exactly what's happening nowadays. I mean, you go to any website, they ask you to click and accept these cookies, right? What are the cookies? The cookies are actually the search patterns of what you do. What did you search, to which website you went, how many times you visited that website, what did you purchase, how many times you purchased that? So they have full behavioral pattern of your purchasing behavior. Then we go to this Facebook, we open the profile, we put our pictures, we put our children's picture, we put our friends, then we tag everybody, we put videos. So they have everything, they have the faces, they have the behavioral patterns, they have how we smile, which is a dynamic thing, right? They have how we walk, what makes us happy, where we go most often. So, then you go back to their path and then you realize how harmful that can be. So, the message for today really is, be aware, get informed. You don't have to click on all of these cookies all the time. You can actually scroll without accepting the cookies. Take care what kind of information you give away. And keep your own data for your own. Thank you.